apply this thing to the icon. Oh, I don't like those last four that are there. Oh, you had to flip a coin before, and boy, are we on to the one that you didn't flip. Sure are. So here's the problem. I know the problem I have with the bard. I don't have a solution. <laughs> I don't know what to do. And that's where we're going to sit for a while. Uh, here's my biggest problem with the bard. Bardic inspiration, numerically, is pretty good. But in but actually using Bardic Inspiration feels so unsatisfying most of the time. And I don't know what to... Because I feel like it's almost there. Like, I don't want to completely change it. I don't want to nuke Bardic Inspiration for what it is right now and completely change it. Because it's kind of like Sneak Attack where it's built into a lot of things. But I feel like it just needs something a little bit more. Is there any other... Let's just go through the features first. Okay. Other than Bardic Inspiration. Because we, we know that one. You have a certain amount of dice. You can you can give them. They have to use it in 10 minutes. They can add it to pretty much any rule. Other than damage. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack of all trades. Just makes you good at everything you're not good at. Song of Rest. I... Personally... It's, it's fine. It just feels... It's a ribbon feature. Yeah. It, it yeah. It like we already get jack of all trades at second level. It's a ribbon feature. And honestly, <laughs> unlike the paladin one, where I feel like there's never a use. At least song of rest, there's always a use. You just have to remember. To yeah. Use. Yeah. You, You're gonna use that. It's good. It's, it's fine. just forgettable. <laughs> yeah. Expertise is fine. It's, they're really good. At certain things. Uh, font inspiration. Uh, you can. Uh, you gain upgrade. it back when you take a short nap. Yeah, that's uh, that's an upgrade for your Bardic Inspiration. Counter Charm. Counter Charm is the worst ability in the entire game. Maybe you want to change that one. Okay. Give it a read, Kai. Have you ever read it? Uh, I think I have. It wasn't. I ignored it. Uh, you gain the ability to use your to use musical notes or words of power to disrupt mind influencing effects as an action. You can start a performance that lasts until the end of your next turn. During that time, you and any friendly creature within thirty feet of you has advantage on. Saving throws against being frightened or charmed. The creature must be able to hear you through the gain its benefit. The performance ends early if you're incapacitated or silenced, or if you voluntarily end it. No action required. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to say that when you first think of this, you're like, okay, what well, it's whatever. Like you don't think about it, but if you just take a minute to think about it, you are using your action that lasts until the end of your next turn to give your team advantage. Against being frightened or charmed, not to help, not to help them get out of being frightened or charmed, to give them advantage against being frightened or charmed. So you have to know it's coming. You have to then use your entire action to do this, and it only lasts for one turn. I think it should be like a, just be a uh, a use of bardic inspiration to remove a charm from an ally. That'd be cool. I feel like that's way better. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally what Alice said, just said. That's what I read, <laughs> Alice. That's what I was oh, doing. Oh, you read it? Okay, it just, it, just came, it just came up on my screen. Okay, I thought that you just said no. the same thing. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I I totally agree. I think that's perfect. I think that you should just use a bark inspiration to cure Frightened or Charm Effect within 30 feet of you. As a bonus action, by the way. Not an action. Yeah, so as a... Okay. I'll it. do it. Oh, you'll do it? Okay. Okay. Let me just read through the rest of them just to double check. Would that also fix Bardic Inspiration normally for you? Giving it more uses like that would be better, yeah. Like, if we just make Bardic Inspiration feel more useful, I'm probably fine with it. Right. I'm probably fine with what it is. Again. Magical Secrets is fine. I like that. Oh. Yep, we're going to be sitting here deciding what their 20th level feature should be. Oh, it's dog shit. What's the question? What is it about Bardic Inspiration? Well, we... It just... You know, like I said, it's numerically good. And it's functionally very good. And this might just be a personal thing. But I felt... Because I played a Bard. I played a Bard for an extended period of time. Using Bardic Inspiration did not feel satisfying. It felt like it had slightly too much limit to it to be useful. And it's very useful. But like... I, I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know. I don't know how to word that. That it just didn't feel 
like I was doing anything with Bardic Inspiration. I think this, that, well, honestly, first reason is because it's a cantrip. Uh, you can use Guidance or, um, what's it called? Resistance. Yeah, to do basically what Bardic Inspiration does as a cantrip with no yeah. limit. But also, I think that's why I liked the College of Spirits part, because it does give another feature for Bardic Inspiration that's very unique and fun. Mm -hmm. I love the College of Spirits part. It's my favorite. Because it gives a really fun use of your Bardic Inspiration that scales as you get more levels. I love scaling features as well. That's because it makes you feel stronger without adding more features. It just makes your current features better. Yeah. It makes you feel like you're actually leveling up instead of just getting a new stuff. Why yeah, do I have I eight pings? What happened there? I don't know what happened. What the fuck <laughs> happened? I have like... Okay, what's happening here? No, I don't know what's happening. Oh, okay. Al Alice DM me on Discord. My friend from Toronto also sent me a bunch of shit about Eternals. From because we saw the movie and then I got fucking Discord bot ping. Oh, okay. I had a lot. I had a lot. I was like, "What happened? Who died?" <laughs> but yeah, I was signing uh, class for my game. I found that Bardic Inspiration didn't fit right with sci-fi style game. I chose to slip the class up into the emitter, uh, Sonic and. Leader A in Psychic Classic Copy Spells. Here's the question. Oh, man. This is a big one. This is all sci-fi stuff. I'm trying to start to think about stars. Uh, I was design class for... Yeah, I All right. Um. All right. What are where are we now? Uh, twentieth level. Expertise, magical secrets. Those are all wonderful features. Um. Yeah. And then twentieth level is superior inspiration. Like. I think we're just getting rid of that entirely. That doesn't make any sense. What should a bard do as the peak of their bardic abilities? A bard is all about their arts. What do they do at 20th level that caps them off? What if... What if as long as you... As long as you... Uh, if you are the target of your bardic inspiration, you do not expend a use of bardic inspiration. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay. That's good. Or you don't... I was going to say unlimited use of bardic inspiration, but... I don't want to do that because that just involves a lot of, like, especially with other party member stuff. But if it's just for your own good, I feel like that's perfect. You do not spend a use, I spelled that wrong, uh, of your bardic inspiration die. Believe perfect. That's nice, simple, and boy, does it just make you even more of a charismatic bastard than you already were. You're always just one charismatic asshole. Where are our optional features? Uh, if someone has an uh, inspiring inspiration die and you cast a spell that restores health, which can roll that die and choose target uh, affected by a spell, add number as a bonus yeah. to the hit points. Basically, you can use your bardic inspiration to heal. Well, you can use it to heal or damage. Yeah. And then fourth, when you do that... Wait, when you just level a classic grant ASI, you can do a following or uh, sense of change focus. Replace one oh you can just change your expertise or a cantrip. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the a lot of the classes got something like that that lets you kind of meander and change through a campaign. Right. Well, it's done. That was easier than the rogue. Yeah. Oh shit. Do you have a recommend a uh, recommend for how to treat how to treat gives players insight to end wait, what? Gives players insight to enemies, allies, and problems. I choose to give leader the copy ability, thinking it fight. The... I do not understand the question. I don't know what the copy. Okay, I'm I'm reading it. 
It's more like the grammar, first off, but I understand that you... I'm not sure what the copyability is. Hunter's Mark, but gave that to the soldiers. Language is, in fact, hard. Language is hard. Um, hey, Kai, we got three dickheads, and I don't want to touch either <laughs> of them. <laughs> um... All right, we're doing the artificer last, Parker. Um, so, do you want to deal just with save the artificer for a different stream? <laughs> I already had like some ideas to fix it a little bit. Okay. Because we did talk about it. I just, I know there's a ton of features there. All right, which one do you have more ideas for, the druid or the monk? Um, it's neither an answer. <laughs> All right, well I'm flipping another coin. Uh... Heads is monk, tails is druid. Ready? Uh, wait, the leader can copy spells that they're hit by for a number of uses. That's cool. But this That's an is interesting to idea. give insight to enemy allies and problems. I, I would... An ability... If you're asking for an ability that would help... Uh, give a character insight to basically identify the powers of things. That would be interesting. Um, but you could also just make it a, a sort of ability check that they could make to identify either a spell list, uh, what their highest stats are, or that sort of thing. Or their yeah, you can know, roll AC it. or hit points. If they hit the DC, you just say, okay, this is what their best stat is, and this is these are their spells. Here's the weapons they use. Just like the mm -hmm. information. All right, heads, druid, tails, monk. Ready? All right. We're doing the druid. All right, wild shape. Let me just go through all this. So we obviously, it's wild shape. Really all right, fine. let's 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 back up. Start it like we started the others. Let's identify the problems we possessed with the druid. I'm just gonna quickly go through all their features because. This is also one that I just don't look at too often. Okay. Druids. Uh, this You can speak the language of Druidic. Leave hidden messages. It's like basically thieves can't. They can turn into animals. Uh, of these ta this table. While you're transformed, you have all these rules. Druidic circles your subclass. Uh, animals improve. All that. Timeless body. It's neat. This is a good one for 18th level just for RP. You basically don't mm -hmm. age. Well, you age really slowly. Yeah. Eighth level, you can cast spells as well. That's when you're, uh, you when, when you're an animal, you. and then when you're 20th level, you're, you're always an animal. Never stop. So yeah. All those higher level ones I'm fine with. And I'm fine with Druidic, because it's just Thief Scan. It's just Wild Shape. And the issue that we had was it is the defining feature of a Druid. When you think of a druid, you think that bitch is going to turn into a dog or a cat or a snake or a bird. And then they do it's it. The, and it, well, does... it's the, it truly is the system they gave druids to set them apart from other spellcasters. Right. And it does nothing at all. If unless you're Did a you want to fly? Couldn't you, you just, do? couldn't you just cast a spell to fly? Did you want to swim? There sure are a ton of things that can do that. Why is this Basically, a feature? Well, if here's the thing, it's not even that. It's like yes, it's good for. I would say it is the go-to choice when you are trying to do exploration, such as those examples. The problem is, if you're not a moon druid, that's the only use you're getting out of your what I would call your defining feature of your class. That is the only use you're getting. This out is the of it. equivalent of meta magic to a sorcerer, and yeah. it's not as diverse. Here's the and here's the bigger problem. There exists a subclass, the Moon Druid, that just breaks the game with how powerful it makes Wild Shape. Because Wild, if you're a Moon Druid, Wild Shape goes from being a pointless moderate ribbon, ribbon feature to so ungodly good that there's no way to like do any. Like you might as well do that and play like a fighter or a barbarian instead of using any of your spells. All right, let me let me just read through the base levels of rules of a druid because I I don't look at it often at all. 
So uh, your statistics, blah, blah. your statistics are replaced by the animal, other than your mental ones. You get all your skills and saving throws, proficiencies, in, in addition to the ones that that creature would have. Uh, each creature has the same proficiency bonus. You take the higher one. Uh, you can't use legendary actions or layer actions. When you transform, you assume their health. When you revert, you go back to yours. Excess damage carries over. Can't cast spells till 18th level. And the benefits of any features from your class, you can't use any special senses such as dark vision. And you can either choose whether your equipment just goes into your fucking body like some kind of scoop or it just falls yeah. around. <laughs> Alright. So yeah. With all those limitations in place, what does a druid moon druid add specifically again? So what a moon druid hey, let me pull it up so I'm not speaking nonsense. What a moon druid changes is first of all I want you to go look at that just have that chart up that that limits your uh that little graph that limits what you can change into as you level up. As you can see scroll up just a little bit. As you can see there is at second level you can only do things that do a max of one fourth CR and they cannot have a flying or swimming speed. Example being a normal wolf. So this moon the circle of moon druid changes that it gives you the combat wild shape feature well first of all you can use wild shape as a bonus action with the combat wild shape feature okay that immediately makes it so much more usable um and additionally uh while you are transformed by wild shape you can use a bonus action to expend one spell slot to regain 1d8 hit points per level of the spell slot expended that's not bad. Most rune druids don't bother using it, that little part of the feature. But then you, your other feature that you get upon taking moon druid is you get circle forms. Uh, starting at second level, you can use your wild shape to transform into a beast with a challenge rating as high as one. And it says you ignore the max CR column of the beast shapes table, but must abide by the other limitations there. So the flying and swimming speed things. And then at 6th level, you can transform into a beast with a challenge rating as high as your druid level divided by 3, rounded down. So you can see how much more choices you get for actual things that you can learn. At level 6, you can do CR2 things. You at, A normal druid can do CR1 at level 8, and that's all they get ever. I'm not saying that every druid needs to be the moon druid of your, you should be able to take your wild shape into combat. I am saying that wild shape should be useful to other druids, such as make it a bonus action. And I'm also going to say this, the ability to cast spells within your wild shape should be given to you way earlier than it is. I don't understand why it's not. Is that really such a massive benefit to be able to cast spells while you're a squirrel that you have to put it at 18th level? Yeah, I think what should be changed would be the spells or the bonus action. Yeah. Or probably. Hmm. I think the bonus action should be given to it as a default. Yeah. And I think. I think the spells in your wild shape form should be much earlier. It doesn't have to be at the same time as wild shape. It doesn't have to be immediately, but it should be much earlier. It what should be is... in one of the wild shape improvements, which would mean either it comes on at fourth level or eighth level. I'm trying to think. So I'm trying to think of. I don't know this with the druid spell list enough. It's not so... good. It's by most is considered the worst spell list in the game. Okay. That's an 18th level feature. Red's the only one where I'm going to say maybe we just leave the prepared casting alone just because its spell list is balanced around it having all of its spells. Because yeah. it's a very bad individual spell list. Where would... Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this whole handy dandy table we got here. Where would we put beast spells in relation? Because there's a lot of dashes here. Yeah. Quite a few. Quite a few. Nice. 
I was thinking like fifth, honestly. Because remember, if it's bonus action, you can still cast spell and then bonus action to, into your animal. Yeah. And that can take I mean, you for a bit. Maybe seventh. Maybe seventh is a. Maybe seventh. At seventh level, uh, you still can't cast anything with a flying. Like, okay, so what are we concerned about here? Like, what's the problem of just giving? It's not a, uh, like it's it's not an issue of having it being too uh, powerful at early. I'm just trying to make it so that Moon Druid still has the leg up for a while. I mean, the Moon Druid's always gonna have the leg up because, again, at sixth level, like their their scale, their form scale. They okay. go. Their forms are a third. You can do a max CR of a third of your druid level. The highest any other druid is allowed to do is a max CR of one. Then yeah, let's make it fifth level. Let's just put that... these spells at fifth. Uh, problem. A fish does not have hands, and as such, should not be able to perform the smack of The the thing does address that, saying that you can ignore uh components that don't have a gold cost, uh, such as somatic and verbal. When you are in wild shape, the feature does address that. I will. Uh, I have a, I, uh, I have a, I have a idea for a druid wild shape that might be nerfed but make it easier. Uh, what's your idea? Really, the wild, like truly, I think the wild shape is going to solve most of the issue, Kai. Um, because I don't know, like I said, the spell list is a problem. Like their their prepared spellcasting and spell list is a problem, but that's. So much more of a problem than I think we're prepared to handle. handle. I was actually going to say, um, is there something we want to replace at 18th level now that B spells isn't there? Because they have Timeless Body there and that's it. They just age slowly at 18th level. Is there anything else mm. you want to add for that? And it doesn't have to be good. It could be like the Rogues thing where it's just like a random MacGuffin just to fill space. Huh. What about... Hmm. What about just the ability to cast, like... Uh... Hold on. There is a... Where is the spell? Do, do, do. Let's see. Uh, what about just the ability to cast speak with plants and speak with animals at will at that point? That'd be good. Like you can talk to nature. You're such a you're such a Oops. piece of nature at that point that you can communicate with any any part of it. You can cast. You can cast speak with animals and speak with plants at will without expending a spell slot or requiring any or requiring any components because i like the image of just going you're just walking through nature and you can speak to these things you don't have to do the hand gestures and the spells and everything there you go those are your two uh this is gonna be called i don't know what is this uh uh call it one with nature did we name the rogue one? Uh, no, we just left it what its name was before, I think. <laughs> Didn't we? Which one was the one that got the big change for the rogue? Reliable talent is now the group one. Yeah, it's just reliable talent. I mean, that's fine. That works as a name, honestly. <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. Alright, then. Is that the is that the druid just changing wild shape to... Well, where's, it? where's the action so I can change that to bonus action? Um, <laughs> at the very beginning of it, you can use your. It's right there. There it is. Bonus section. There we go. Bonus action. I and... think. I think that solves a lot of issues, and it doesn't take away anything from the Moon Druid because the Moon Druid's still the only one that gets <laughs> forms worth a damn. Yeah. That wild ship should be based animal, uh, base animal kingdoms, wherein the traits assigned to type of animals are made clear. While avians fly, your stats based in general are types of mammals. I mean, that's basically how D and D works. Is the thing. Most birds are the same, and fish. There's very I'll few that, are, that have a stat block that are different. 
the stupid thing that was the close did when they were designing the druid they in the player's handbook they said they literally say uh ask your dm for the stats of any creature you turn into because they have the monster's manual and i'm like fuck you yeah i that's stupid Like, I'm not going to design it this way of like, I like at this point, there's enough general access to stat blocks that I don't think it's a huge problem anymore. But you should, I'll probably design the game. You should have had like a list of things to turn into and then said, like, given the option of like your DM can give you the option to turn into other beasts from the monster's manual. Aside from these like wolf, bear, fucking moose. Just give basic things to the druids in the player's handbook. Would have been nice. Would have been a nice convenience. What about their optional features? Do they? What do they do? Uh, 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 you gain the ability to summon a spirit that assumes an animal form as an action. You spend a spell, a use of your wild shape feature to cast a familiar spell without two confront. Uh, the familiar is a fae instead of a beast, and the familiar disappears after a number of hours equal to your druid level. Fine. Sure. Why not? I guess. <laughs> and then they can also change your cat trips at size. Yeah, like everyone else. I'm satisfied with the druid change, Kai. How about you? Uh, wait, yes. Ask, the ask part, I just link it to druid level and makes that it doesn't matter who the animal is. Basically doing the thing... I think they're talking about... Yeah, the basically the same thing they did with the primal companions for, be for Beastmaster Rangers, of having a set stat block, but you are creatively allowed to look like whatever you want. Yeah. That's a lot of... Or... I agree that it should have been designed that way in the first place, but yeah. yeah. Uh, and then that's... All right, Kai. We, if we're truly saving the artifice, are you satisfied with Drew? By the way, it still says Bard on the uh, square. I'll change it, but yeah. If we're satisfied, it's on to the monk. And this is the first one where I say, this is an undertaking. Monk! Monk. Monk. How much do you know about the monk? I I know I've read it several times, and every time I instantly forget about it. <laughs> That's how much I don't like it. I can I guarantee you, I have looked at it several times, and every time it's like, eh, eh, eh. Do I have... Can I go on a small rant at the beginning of this one? Uh, yeah. Because I have just so many things about the monk. The monk, conceptually, is my favorite class in the game. Practically, I hate it. I make so many monk characters that I want to play, and I would happily play any of them, and I would suffer through what I consider to be the most, the worst treated class in the game by Wizard of the Ghost. They act, they actively act like they hate it. Evidence, way of the ascendant dragon. It was weak in UA. And then they nerfed it. I I say it's weak in the UA, and anyone can fight me on that opinion. I, was, so, I agreed with you. I said it was weak <laughs> too. I want it up. And so now we're sitting here with no real improvements. The only and oh my god, the the freaking idea that Wizard Coast put out that they said we did not want to turn. The, the monk, Wizard of the Wakos said they didn't want to. They didn't want to turn the monk into a damage dealing class, and then I said to myself, "Wait, what are they supposed to be?" And then they said it is supposed to be a support role class, and I said, "I hate you so much." The Kai, what is what is the only support based ability they have? Stunning they have strike. one. They have stunning strike. So Wizard of the Coast just looked at us and said, "Your class is stunning strike." Yeah. That was stupid. This one is going to be difficult because it's going to involve us taking subclasses away from the monk to just give it to the monk. Yeah, Barto, I don't know. I don't know why they think this is supposed to be support. They said this is supposed to be a frontline support character, and I said, wow. Okay, let me just go down a small laundry list of things that I think were just wrong on the monk. Uh, just at a at the most basic level, why is a monk a D8 hit die? Kai, why is a monk the same hit die as a warlock? Uh, it has less of a hit die than the ranger. 
I guess you're a support. There's no has, reason why. There's absolutely no reason. It should have a D10 hit die. And I will not I will not compromise on that. You know, I heard someone say how hit die should be flavored, that it should basically be your endurance. When you take a hit, you're actually blocking it, but you know, that's you blocking it poorly. Yeah. Take a punch in the face. You're not going down. It's not like because yeah. it's supposed to be like that, it, so that things with swords and shit, when they hit you, they don't just cutting your arm off and whatever. Yeah. But then it, then in the case where the monk, where you're as squishy after training for years in a monastery, push-ups, pull-ups, meditation. Your body is your temple. And yet you are no stronger than some guy who uh, lost to a fiend in a game of Jack Black. Or black, Blackjack. Jack Black. Yeah, a Jack game, Black. A game of Jack Black. Blackjack, I mean. But yeah, you're, you're no stronger than him. At least in terms of that, that flavoring. It, it's, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Also, considering they have notoriously some of the lowest AC at the, begin, at the early stages of the game. Don't get it. Yeah. Well, so where do we start with this? Oh, also, key points is ridiculous. Yeah. The amount the amount of abilities you have that need you to use key points, and the f how few key points you have until very late is absolutely stupid. I thought we were well, we're eventually gonna have to do it with the sorcerer when we get around to subclasses, but we're gonna have to do it now with the monk. Of what do we add? What what do they get? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna genuinely try very hard to not just steal from subclasses. Genuinely gonna try. But do you know what I think? Uh, do you know what I think should happen? What flurry of blows should not cost key points. I think flurry of blows should just be a monk ability. Because, for example, let me let me say it this way: if you scroll down to the martial arts feature. So, the martial arts feature says a lot of things. It, uh, let's see. It would be here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the martial arts feature right here. And this is specifically the thing that I was about to talk about. Of when you make an attack, when you, uh, use the attack action with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon, you can make one unarmed attack as a bonus action. And then what Flurry of Blows does is... Immediately after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Why is it not? Is martial arts just not two unarmed attacks as a bonus action? Because you have so many other things to spend your key points on that doing this every turn is just going to drain you. And guess what? If you don't do this with just the well, no, even with this, even with two unarmed attacks as a bonus action. You are still not competitive in damage with the fighter or the barbarian or the rogue or the ranger or the hexblade warlock or the blade singer wizard. All because of the martial arts die being a D4 at the early levels, so you're yeah. gonna deal a maximum of eight plus whatever when a fighter has a great sword dealing fucking twelve, oh. a max of twelve plus whatever. Yeah. And then oh, you get more martial arts die, yeah, and they get extra attacks. They're doing more than you still. No, you're still doing more than you. Here's the thing. Here in my head, this is how it should scale. The martial arts, the, we're going to compare a monk to a fighter because that's truly who I think they should be the closest to as a fighter. A to I mean, honestly, I went on the train before. They're so close to the fighter that I to this day still feel like the monk could have just been a subclass for the fighter. But I'm not going to go into that. Um where the fighter has their damage and then they gain the ability to use that damage more times as they level up. The monk should start at the opposite end of the spectrum of they have all the attacks they're going to get, which is a lot of attacks, but the, each of those attacks has to scale up in damage as they level. So I think that's what should happen, which is where they meet in the middle eventually. I mean, granted, a fighter is going to pass you no matter what you do, but you know. That's a fighter. That's a fighter. That's fine. That that part's fine. But truly, Kai, can you tell me a reason that you should not just be able to... That the martial arts feature should not be the two unarmed attacks instead of having a, the feature Flurry of Blows? Because I think Flurry of Blows 
delete it. Just get rid oh, of yeah, it. I think I because you're still matching what the uh, fighter does. Do seven more dice, so I guess your average is higher. You have a better bell curve at the beginning. As and it goes, off they at the end because you don't keep getting flurry of blows as you go up higher. You have mm. better dice, but yeah. Well, I mean, they well at that point they have better dice and the same amount of attacks as you, and more considering action surge. So they're going to beat you by a lot, eventually. Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's the first change we make. So here's what I here's here's what I say. And this is how I want to do it, because don't delete Flurry of Blows, because there are some features, especially uh, subclass features, that's, that involve the activation of Flurry of Blows. Let's just delete... Uh, well, let's start this. When you use the attack of... Blah, 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 you can... Uh, use Flurry of Blows. And where you're going to... If Flurry of Blows, you can make two unarmed strikes. Wow. Yep. No key cost. It's feckin' gone. Then let's slowly make our way down. Well, here, I also need, I also need to do this. I need to uh, copy and then delete that. And then put it above key. Uh, right and put it right above key because you need to get it at first level, not second level. There we go. Alright. Patient defense. Spend a key point. You can take a dodge action as a bonus action each turn. What does dodge and, do? And just uh I'll tell you. Uh the dodge action. Uh, duh, duh, duh. when you take the dodge action, you focus entirely on avoiding attacks. Until the start of your next turn, any attack roll ma made against you has disadvantage. If you can see the attacker and you make a dexterity saving throw, or and you make dexterity saving throws with advantage, you lose this benefit if you're incapacitated or your speed drops to zero. I think it's fine. That's a key point. It's yeah. one. It's up to wind. Mm -hmm. You can take disengage or dash as a bonus action to turn, and jump distance is doubled for the turn. That's also fine. I'm perfectly okay with that. And our defense is... Your dick of armor, that's fine. At ninth level, you get the ability to move, or sorry, not defense, movement. Is you're running around at sonic speeds without wearing armor or shield, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You can also somehow uh, run a, run up walls and across liquids without falling mm -hmm. due to movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get your pass. Yep. Deflect missiles is something that was weird to me, but it's also I don't. It's just weird to me. Also, there's a, here's a, you want to talk about weird, and I get it, and I will leave it as it is because I kind of like the balance of it. Unarm, oh, but unarmored movement, the thing where you can run across surfaces and uh, across, or across water surfaces, up walls and stuff like that. It specifically says only during the move. So if you end your turn and you haven't gotten off of that surface, you will fall. Uh, Alice goes. I also think patient defense should be a reaction or bonus action. If for free. Wait, which one's patient defense? We just read it. I, it shouldn't be free. Dodge is really good. Disadvantage is mm -hmm. a lot. It's plus one key point's not a lot. You get one, key... one per here's level. The th here's, here's the thing we're fixing. It was me for you to be, do anything competitive at all. There were basically, there was no stationary monk mode. There was no like, all right, I'm conserving key points and I'm still helping my team. If you, before, by default, by rules as written, if you are not spending key points in your turn, you are doing nothing. You are doing very little damage, and that's it. So I'm just trying to make it where you have a state where you don't always have to be spending key points as a monk. That's all I want to accomplish here. Yeah, so I th honestly, I'm still fine with, like, you either choose to do the damage or you choose to not take damage because mm -hmm. you're very, very clear if something's trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. Or if you just want to run away or whatever. And remember, if you spend a key point on dodge action... You can still take your reaction to hit them if they just don't hit you and start walking away. Mm -hmm. And then you could, if you really want to force them to hit you, you can get like a feat like Sentinel where you hit Sentinel's them and they can't hit. run away. Sentinel's a good hit me ability. Right. There's ways to make patient defense good. We're just trying to make it good without you think sitting there being like, I'm useless. Or why aren't yeah. I just using Flurry of Blows to kill them? 
Point is, Flurry of Blows with most of the issue. Patient Defense and Step of the Wind, you still have a reason to use. Okay, um, blah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Deflect yeah. Missiles, do we have a problem with, did you say Deflect Missile was weird, do you? It was weird, but I'm not sure if it was, like, something I would change at all. It's just, I've never found a time to use it. And, like, I get when you use it, I just, so, okay, just to read through it. Use your reaction to deflect or catch a missile when you're hit by a ranged weapon attack. Uh, when you do so, the damage you take from the attack is reduced by 1d10, you, uh, plus dex, monk level. If it's zero, you can catch it if it's small enough to hold in one hand, and you must have at least one hand free. If you catch a missile in this way, you can spend one key point to make a ranged attack with the weapon or piece of ammunition you just caught. As part of the same reaction, you make this uh, attack with proficiency regardless of whatever yada yada, and a missile counts as a monk weapon for the attack has a normal range of 20 feet and a long range of 60. The thing that was weird to me is more along the lines of you do get hit by ranged weapon attacks. It's more like... If you actually think about it. Because obviously okay. on paper, deflect missile is good. I'm not denying that. It's yeah. more along the lines of if there's a person with a bow and you're a monk mm. in a group, the person with the bow isn't going to hit you. They're going to hit the spellcaster. Oh, yeah. I think deflect missile missile bleh, should Michelin, deflect the Michelin man. Yeah, deflecting the Michelin man. It should work around you. So if they aren't hitting you but the attack is still passing by you, you can use it. That way they aren't forced. You can still use this feature, but it's like obviously there's still the counterplay of the ranged guy moving so they're not hitting you if they really don't want you to catch it. What about what about if we added the thing if they hit you or a creature within five feet of you? Yeah, something like that. It's it's less of the feature's good. It's just that odds are when you think about it, they're not hitting you with a ranged attack. That's all I would change. It should if you want the monk to be a support, they should help the people around them with their features. This doesn't help anyone but them. Yep, I Which added makes... the or a creature within five feet of you. Yeah, I think it's fine if it's like that. That way mm -hmm. you're helping your team like they're designed they want you to with these features mm -hmm. everything else say there's a there's something to be said here about the fact that this doesn't scale yeah that well like it's good enough where i don't think we really need to change it but like that's something i'd be open to changing maybe how... Like it scales okay. One d ten plus your dex modifier plus your monk level. That'll you'll get some mileage out of that, even at high levels. Because at the very least, you're still reducing the damage, even if you don't get to fully catch it and throw it back. Here's an idea that's kind of weird, but so I'm gonna just pitch it without thinking about how it scales. What if instead of doing it based on the damage, it's based on AC? So if it fails, you basically use your reaction, reduce or increase the AC for this attack, and if you make it miss, then you do the rest of it. What if? What if it was? Hmm. Okay. That way okay. it would still scale later on to level, because everyone else's AC would scale later on in levels. So what if? What if the thing was you added like a monk die or a martial arts die roll of? Yeah, I think that AC. might help. That way it's that way it's scaled with you as well. I think that'd be good. But should it be a should it be a martial arts die plus your dexterity modifier? Yeah, I think we would have to take up the monk level because then it's way too much. That's then then you're adding potentially twenty to the twenty AC. Because remember, this is your full reaction, and odds are the other guy is gonna have more than one attack. So it's still fine if it's your monk die plus dex and you make it save because you're only deflecting one missile out of however many. You just don't want it to be impossible to fail by adding your monk level. Everything else about how the feature actually reacts with damage and everything, I'm super fine with that. You use a key point, mm -hmm. the damage is based on whatever, the range is however far you can fucking throw it because you can't throw it 300 feet or whatever. Um, uh, Barto, I know what you're talking about. It did something similar. Um, here, I'll get the specifics of it. It's not exactly that. It's the, I think it's called protection fighting style. Yeah. When a creature you can see attacks a target other than you that has been five feet of you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage. There's that. There's definitely several features because I know the bar the 
There's a human dragon mark that I was looking at. The Sentinel, Mark of the Sentinel. That's a feature like that where you just swap places and take the damage. Then I think there's a barbarian feature where you can, like, or a fighting style, like you said, where you can reduce the thing. You can also reduce damage, increase. There's a lot of things that work like that. There's mm -hmm. plenty of features that in the game that hey, all you know, And you know what that does? That, that makes the. That gives you the. You couldn't do it with the protection fighting style because it requires you wielding shield. But in terms of the races and maybe it's even some multi-classing because a power, the Redemption Paladin has a similar feature. There's cool builds to be. Just think about it as a character idea. There's cool builds to be made with this now. A monk specifically made to protect your allies. Yep, that'd be cool. Um, I'm happy with deflect missiles like this now. Spending a, like you can reduce it to zero and catch it, and you spend a key point to throw it back if you want to. All right, ASI's fine. I'm down with that. Slow ASI is fall fine. is fine. Extra attack is fine. Is extra attack fine with the? Yeah, it's probably fine with that. You can only use the bonus yeah. action thing once. Because you only yeah. get one bonus action. Yeah, um, it would not trigger twice, no. <laughs> yeah. Stunning Strike. I mean, it's still good, uh, I guess. Yeah, here's, here, here's the question. Here's the question that you always have to ask when you refigure the monk. Do you nerf Stunning Strike to make their other stuff more valuable? No. I'm just going to say it because... So how... I'm just going to read it. So we have the clarification. Mm. You... Hit a creature with a melee weapon. You can spend one to attempt a stunning strike. They must succeed a con save or be stunned until the end of your next turn. And the way it was originally supposed to be is that you um, use flurry of blows and then you stunning strike on all of them using all your key points, one big fucking mass. And now that we've changed flurry of blows, it's still the same amount of key points you're spending. It's one less. It's one less. It's one and, less. And, and, and. Let's all be clear. When something is a constitution saving throw, that's bad because statistically, almost all monsters in the monster manual have very good constitution saving throws. So this is not overpowered. It's just when the monster does happen to fail at that one time, that's just a bad day for the DM. <laughs> right. The, the reason why I don't think we nerf it is all we've done is we've buffed the uh, cost of Flurry of Blows, Stunning Strike, shenanigans by making it one less. That's one key point less. Yeah. One key point less, and that's fine, I think. The monk kind of needed it. Stunning Strike's really, really good. No point in nerfing it if that's all it's changed. Well, here, here's the here's the question. Here's my other question. Yeah. So, because the something I'm trying to solve is key point starvation, and still giving you options with your key points, because let's be clear, what's he, what's just here is not all that you spend your key points on. There are subclasses like the astral self that hunger for key points as well. Do we make it so that you're not draining all? Because at fifth level, you have five key points. You can spend four of the. If you're just trying to stun strike something, you could potentially spend four of them in one one get run round. Are we okay with that, or do we want to make it where you spend a key point, or you spend two key points, and all your attacks that turn have stunning strike on them? I guess that might be better if we do it that way. If you really, yeah, I guess if you really want a stunning strike, that'd be better, and it would still be cheaper if you really were going for that, but still more expensive if you just want to do your subclass features and just ignore the stunning strike. Mm hmm. Yeah, I guess. What if so. we did two key points and then all your attacks that turn? That that does sound better. Have stunning strike. Here's a bad idea. Half the max key the monk can have, but then regen key at the start of each round. I mean, you say bad idea, but that's not awful. That's not a terrible idea, honestly. I feel like the, if we had something later on, that should be a thing where every round they get one key point back. Hey, guess what their 20th level feature is? Quite dog shit. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we'll have to save it for that. But yeah, you can, if you want to, well, you can spend... I, I'm con I, I personally, but, and I know. I know there's going to be people that look at this and are like, oh my god, you're buffing Stunning Strike, what's wrong with you? Stunning Strike is not as good as you think it is. If they are fighting any monster, they almost all have really good constitution saving throws. The key save for a monk is never good because their key save DC is wisdom based, which is their secondary stat. The primary is dexterity, unless you're a astral self monk. But guess what? If you're an astral self monk, you're starving for key points because you have to use key points every time you want to start combat. So... I'm confident in saying 
making two, make it cost two key points for all of your attacks that turn to apply Stunning Strike is just fine. Yes, I have spent an enormous amount of time thinking about the monk. No, it's not a problem. Uh, let me reword this by the way. Yeah. When you hit another creature. You know what? I, here, okay, here's a stipulation I think that should be added just so that it doesn't absolutely break using if you're the multi-class in certain things, make mm -hmm. it so that it applies to your next Flurry of Blows for all, along with the hit that activates for Flurry of Blows. Basically, that means... What you do you get, mean? So basically, with that, you would spend two key points. So you use attack, Flurry of Blows. Three attacks. Cost two. It's cheaper. You would not be able to extra attack with that, is what I'm trying to say. Because then, there's plenty of shenanigans where you can action surge fighter... Use Flurry Blows again, get like seven whole stunning strikes. I'm gonna, uh, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna say that's fine because that also involves you sacrificing monk levels to multi class, which means you already have less key points I if suppose. you're multi classing. If something costs you multi, I also never hard, I don't hardly ever think about multi classing when I'm doing these things just because multi classing is, it can get very convoluted. And it's not just that. I, I think about multi class all the time. But the fact that multiclassing is a an optional rule, a DM can outright say, "No, you're not allowed to multiclass into that." B, multiclass costs you levels in your own class, which means you are sacrificing something to get that. So if you want to niche yourself into being, I'm the stunning strike monk. I get, I've got action surge, so I can one turn per combat throw out eight stunning stride attacks. That's your thing. That's fine. That guess what? That's only going to no matter how many of those stunning strikes land on how many different creatures, that's only one round. They will be stunned for one round and that's it. All right. So I think it will be just fine. If it could be divided amongst other turns and you could you could stun them for eight turns, yes, that'd be a very big problem. But at no matter how many times you hit them, they will only be stunned for one round. All right. So that's why I'm going to argue that this is just fine. Key and power strikes. Your unarmed attacks are magical. Awesome. Armor movement increases. Evasion. Uh, oh, do we give the same thing to this the is, rogue to these Yeah, guys? Kai, this is verbatim the same thing. This is exactly the same ability as the rogue. Do you want to change it the same way? Yeah, sure. Might as okay. well. Then I, then I'll good. leave you to copy-paste that one. That's all I'm... Literally all I'm going to do. Uh, here it is. That's the same issue. All right, stillness of mind. Starting at seventh level, you can use your action to end one effect on yourself that is causing you to be charmed or frightened. It's fine. All right, movement improvements. Uh, uh, purity of body. Your mastery of key flowing through you makes you immune to disease and poison. And then more on our movement improvements. <laughs> So did you see the problem I had with the monk of the only real things you get to do are at the very beginning and they are so expensive that you can't do them until yeah. later? Yeah. So that's the thing that needed fixing. Honestly, it's probably fine now. Uh, Tongue of Sun and Moon. You learn to touch the key of other minds so that you can understand all spoken languages. Moreover, any creature that can understand a language can understand what you say. Diamond Soul. Uh... You get proficiency in all saving throws. Additionally, whenever you make a saving throw and fail, you can spend a key point to re-roll. Re-roll it and take the second result. That's really good. All right, movement's fine. Timeless body. Timeless body uh, confuses me. Uh, you, your key sustains you so that you suffer none of the frailty of old age and you can't be aged magically. You can still die of old age, however. In addition, you can no longer you no longer need food or water. It's just the, the only thing that confuses me is the image of just a guy being like, you look like you're 26, but you're so old that it's someone that you just keel over and die. Well, I, I think you still like, you get wrinkles, you get gray hairs. It just means that your like muscles don't atrophy. Just naturally. You still look swole as shit. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Empty body. Uh, you can use, yeah, it's empty because you don't eat or drink. 
Uh, you can you can use your action to spend four key points to become invisible for one minute. During that time, you can also resist and do all damage but force. Additionally, you can spend eight key points to cast the Astral Projection spell without needing material components. When you do so, you can't you take any other creatures with you. Neat. Yeah. It's, it, this gives you that very... It, it gives you a, a kind of Dragon Ball monk feel to it. You can honestly. also run faster. You can also run faster. All right, Kai, what is the immensely powerful 20th level perfect self that you have trained your entire life, dedicated your body as a temple to obtain? When you start battle, you get four more key points. If you have none. I quit. I'm going to say, let's just do the thing that pulled it added as a bad idea where they get a key point back every round just one but it's every round i mean this is 20th level what if you what if you rolled your martial arts die to get key points back <laughs> every round yeah uh... <laughs> or what if no what if you gained a bonus action to be able to roll your uh martial arts die and get okay, key points that back? i, I kind of if you're using your bonus action to do what I'd, I'd get, that makes sense. I like that. As a bonus action, you can roll what your martial arts die and regain a number of key points equal to your roll. Because this, I mean, I'm... We're kind of following the theme that we have here of effectively unlimited resources with some caveats, which everyone else has, which is what I think we should do. Yeah, the bonus action's where I think it makes it fun. Just because yeah. that means when you're doing that on that turn, you can't stunning mm -hmm. strike, you can't flurry of blows, you can't do any of those other bonus action shit, you just get yeah. one slap. This also means that effectively at the you will have full key points going into every combat, because out of combat you can just roll it and get them back. Yep. Which is perfectly fine, if you ask me. Uh, man, then they have optional class features! What do they got? Uh, what? They got, some, they got a few, actually. You train yourself to use a variety <laughs> of weapons as monk weapons, not just simple weapons and short swords. Whenever you finish short or long rest, you can touch one weapon, focus your key, and that weapon is now a monk weapon. You choose the weapon, the, it must meet these criteria, it has to be simple or martial, you must be proficient, it can't be heavy and special. Uh... He feel attacks their little oh there should be a that's the next thing there should be a it did yeah so i'm gonna say that i have one simple problem with this and do you know what that is but you must be proficient in it yeah it's kind of weird because that means the only things you're getting are things that you got from like a racial uh w weapon bonus so that makes me think that it doesn't feel like there's much of a point to this ability because of that little caveat let's just Let's just get back. <laughs> <laughs> you feel attacks. You if you spend one key point or more as part of your action on your turn, Hi, you can make uh hello. You can make one attack with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon as a bonus action before the end of your turn. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's just a that's just a ribbon feature that's like if you used your entire action to use an ability that costs key points, you can at least make an attack as a bonus action. Uh, quick with healing as an action, spend two key points, roll martial arts die, you regain number of hit points equals the number of roll plus your proficiency bonus. Okay. Mm hmm And then focus aim. When you miss with an attack roll, you can spend one three to increase your attack roll by two for each of these key points you spend. Ah, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Spend a lot I'm of key fine with all of the it. I'm fine with all the optional class features. And all Kai, I think we did it. Well I think we all I think we I think the monk is done. Oh, for just the monk I'm like we're almost done. No, no, we're fully done. We're there's, fully done. There's, there's one, none left. There's one nope, more. there's none left. Nope, not at all. 